I had referred to the tectonic shifts caused by the conflict in Europe, which had created fresh challenges for global growth and the conduct of monetary policy. As the war draws on and sanctions and retaliatory actions intensify, shortages, volatility in commodity and financial markets, supply dislocations, and most alarmingly, persistent and spreading inflationary pressures are becoming more acute with every passing day. Debt distress is rising in developing world amidst capital outflows and currency depreciations. Recent GDP releases suggest that the global economic recovery is losing pace. Amidst these challenges, which I termed as humongous in my last policy statement, the Indian economy has shown resilience drawing from its innate strength of its underlying fundamentals supported by prudent and favorable policy mix. In the conduct of monetary policy, we have demonstrated our reserve, resolve not to be backed by, not to be bound by any rule book, and our preparedness to decisively deploy full range of tools, both conventional and unconventional. By remaining accommodative, monetary policy continues to foster congenial financial conditions to support growth and mitigate the adverse effects of the geopolitical crisis. As a result, the Indian economy has managed to weather the shock so far. Reassuringly, we have also been able to preserve macro financial stability despite the synchronized shocks of commodity prices, supply disruptions, and higher inflation unleashed by the war. Confronted by elevated inflationary pressures that have shifted the future trajectory of in inflation upwards, we have announced our intention to engage in withdrawal of accommodation to ensure that inflation remains aligned to the target. As I had stated in April 2000, 2022, sorry, as I had stated in last April, monetary policy, uh, our actions will be calibrated to the rapidly evolving situation so that impulses of growth are preserved and strengthened. Our journey is best reflected in the words of famous Greek philosopher Epictetus, the trials you encounter will in introduce you to your strengths. Remain steadfast and one day you will build something that, it, that endures. As we navigate through this difficult period, it is necessary to be sensitive to the new realities and incorporate them into our thinking. In this, uh, in the recent uh, World Economic Outlook released by the IMF in April 2022, the International Monetary Fund, that is the IMF, has noted, and I quote, the economic effects of the war are spreading far and wide like seismic waves that emanate from the epicenter of an earthquake, mainly through commodity markets, trade, and financial linkages. This sounds somewhat similar to our description of the tectonic shifts in the monetary policy statement of mine last month. It is, however, an unquote. Uh, the bit I said about it resembles was mine, but the statement of the IMF uh, reads again, I will read it again. The economic effects of the war are spreading far and wide like seismic waves that emanate from the epicenter of an earthquake, mainly through commodity markets, trade, and financial linkages. It is, however, important to recognize that despite our strengths and our buffers, India is not an island in this globally connected world. There are spikes in headline in CPI inflation in March 2022, as anticipated in the MPC statement of April. The print for April is also expected to be elevated. There is the collateral risk that inflation remains elevated at these levels for too long. And if this kind of a scenario unfolds, then it can de-anchor inflation expectations, which in turn can become self-fulfilling and detrimental to growth 
and financial stability. Hence, we, we must remain in readiness to use all policy levers to preserve macroeconomic and financial stability while enhancing the economy's resilience. I reiterate that the situation is dynamic and fast changing and our actions have to be tailored accordingly. This is something which was there in my statement of last month also. Against this backdrop, the Monetary Policy Committee decided to hold an off-cycle meeting on 2nd and 4th May 2022 to reassess the evolving inflation growth dynamics and the impact of the developments after the MPC meeting of 6th to 8th April 2022. Based on this assessment of the macroeconomic situation and the outlook, the Monetary Policy Committee voted unanimously to increase the policy repo rate by 40 basis points, 4-0, by 40 basis points to 4.40% with immediate effect. Consequently, the standing deposit facility rate stands adjusted to 4.40%. 1.5% and the marginal standing facility rate and bank rate to 4.65%. The MPC also decided to unanimously remain uh, accommodative while focusing on withdrawal of accommodation to ensure that inflation remains within the target going forward while supporting growth. So the uh, decision in this regard, what is called as the stance, is. Uh, uh, status quo, in other words, it's the same as was last time. I would now like to set out the rationale behind the MPC's decision and the stance. Globally, inflation is rising alarmingly and spreading fast. Geopolitical tensions are ratcheting up inflation to their highest levels in the last three to four decades in major economies while moderating external demand. Global crude prices, that is crude oil prices, are ruling above $100, 100 US dollars per barrel, and they remain volatile. Global food prices touched a new record in March and have firmed up even further since then. Inflation sensitive items relevant to India, such as edible oils, are facing shortages due to conflict in Europe and export ban by key producers. The jump in fertilizer prices and other input costs has a direct impact on food prices in India. Further, the normalization of monetary policy in major advanced economies is now expected to gain pace significantly, both in terms of rate increases and unwinding of quantitative easing as well as rollout of quantitative tightening. These developments would have ominous implications for emerging economies, including India. Meanwhile, COVID-19 infections and lockdowns in major global production hubs are likely to accentuate global supply chain, chain bottlenecks while depressing growth. In fact, global growth projections have been revised downwards by up to 100 basis points for this calendar year. These dynamics pose upside risks to India's inflationary tra inflation trajectory set out in the MPC resolution of April. Further, the MPC noted that domestic economic activity is progressing broadly on the lines anticipated in April. Contact intensive services are benefiting from pent up demand and investment activity is showing some signs of gaining traction. At the same time, the MPC judged that the inflation outlook warrants an appropriate and timely response through resolute and calibrated steps to ensure that second round effects of supply side shocks on the economy are contained and long term inflation expectations are kept firmly anchored. In the MPC's view, monetary policy response at this juncture would help to preserve macro-financial stability amidst increasing volatility in financial markets. Accordingly, the MPC decided to increase the policy rate by 40 basis points 
and it also decided to remain accommodative while focusing on withdrawal of accommodation to ensure that inflation remains within target going forward while supporting growth. Let me now elaborate further on the outlook for growth and inflation. I would now first like to focus on growth. In this high voltage global environment, it is useful to take stock of domestic macroeconomic and financial conditions. The rebound in domestic economic activity that took hold with the ebbing of the Omicron wave is turning out to be increasingly broad based. Private consumption is, is regaining traction on the back of recuperating contact intensive services and rising discretionary spending. The forecast of a normal southwest monsoon in 2022 for the fourth successive year has brightened agricultural prospects and this should support rural consumption. There are also signs of an incipient revival taking place in the investment cycle. This is reflected in high frequency indicators like imports and production of capital goods, rising capacity utilization supported by conducive financial conditions and stronger corporate sector balance sheets. Export growth has remained buoyant while persisting high growth in non-oil, non-gold imports reflects a durable revival in domestic demand. Even as the drivers of domestic economic activity are getting stronger, they face headwinds from global spillovers in the form of protracted and intensifying geopolitical tensions, elevated commodity prices, COVID-19 related lockdowns or restrictions in some major economies, slowing external demand and tightening global financial conditions on the back of monetary policy normalization in advanced economies. These risks are evolving on the lines anticipated in April 2022 statement and appear to be lingering. Let me turn to inflation now. The sharp acceleration in headline CPI inflation in March 2022 to 7% was propelled in particular by food inflation uh, by food inflation due to the impact of adverse spillovers from unprecedented high global food prices. Nine out of the 12 food subgroups registered an increase in inflation in the month of March. High frequency price indicators for April indicate the persistence of food, food price pressures. Simultaneously, the direct impact of increases in domestic pump prices of petroleum products beginning the second fortnight of March is feeding into core inflation prints and is expected to have intensified in April. Looking ahead, food inflation pressures are likely to continue. Food price indices of the Food and Agriculture Organization, that is FAO, and the World Bank touched historical highs in March and remain elevated. Spillovers from global wheat shortages are impacting domestic prices even though domestic supply remains comfortable. Prices of edible oils may firm up further due to export restrictions by key producing countries and the loss of sunflower oil output due to the war. Elevated feed costs are translating into escalation in poultry, milk and dairy product prices. International crude oil prices continue to hover above US dollar 100 per barrel and this is prompting pass through to domestic pump prices. The risks of unprecedented input cost pressures translating into yet another round of price increases for processed food, non-food manufactured products and services are now more potent than before. This could strengthen corporate pricing power if margins get squeezed inordinately. To sum up, the strengthening of inflationary pressures in sync with persistence of adverse global price shocks poses upward risks to inflation trajectory presented in April MPC resolution.
in these circumstances, it is necessary for monetary policy to focus on withdrawal of accommodation. It may be recalled that in response to the pandemic, monetary policy had shifted gears to an ultra accommodative mode with a large reduction of 75 basis points in the repo rate on March 27, 2020, followed by another reduction of 40 basis points on 22nd May 2020. Accordingly, the decision of the MPC today to raise policy repo rate by 40 basis points to 4.4%, 4.40% may be seen as a reversal of the rate action of May 2000, of May 22, 2020. In keeping with the announced stance of withdrawal of accommodation set out in April 2022. So in other words, in last month, we had set out a stance of withdrawal of accommodation and today's decision should be seen as a continuation of that announcement. We had also said last month that uh, the uh, situation is constantly changing, fast changing, and our actions will be tailored accordingly. And uh, what we are doing is to reverse the increase of 40 basis points, uh, the, the, sorry, the reduction of 40 basis points in the repo rate which was done three year, or in two years ago in May 2020, we are just reversing that 40 basis points today. And this is precisely in line with the stance of withdrawal of accommodation, which was set out in last month's MPC statement. I would now like to focus on liquidity and financial market conditions. In April, several liquidity management measures were undertaken in alignment with the shift in monetary policy stance, including restoration of a symmetric LAF corridor around the policy repo rate and the introduction of the Standing Deposit Facility, SDF. These measures operationalize the primacy accorded to maintaining price stability while keeping in mind the objective of growth. Monetary policy has to engender an environment in which inflation persistence is broken and inflation expectations are re-anchored. Headroom for this re-anchoring or reordering of priorities is becoming available with the receding of the pandemic and the steady broad-based broad basing of growth as economic activity regains and surpasses pre-pandemic levels. Liquidity conditions need to be modulated in line with policy action and stance to ensure their full and efficient transmission to the rest of the economy. Since the April policy announcement, banking system liquidity has remained comfortable, in fact, more than comfortable. Average surplus liquidity in the banking system, which is reflected in total absorption through the SDF and variable rate reverse repo auctions, that is VRRR auctions, amounted to rupees 7.5 lakh crore during April 8th to April 29th. The large liquidity overhang in the form of daily surplus funds parked under the SDF has been, has seen, has been on an average rupees 2 lakh crore during the month of April. And this has resulted in the weighted average call money rate, that is WACR, which is the operating target of monetary policy dipping below the SDF. The favorable response of banks as evident in the bid cover ratio to the 14 day and 28 day VRRR auctions, as well as the US dollar and Indian rupee sell by swap auction, which was conducted on April 26th. These also suggest that system level liquidity remains ample. Therefore, in keeping with the stance of withdrawal of accommodation and in line with the earlier announcement of gradual withdrawal of liquidity over a multi-year time frame, it has been decided to increase the cash reserve ratio, CRR, by 50 basis points, that is 50, 50 basis points to 4.5% of net demand and time liabilities, that is NDTL effective from the fortnight beginning 21st May 2022. 
the withdrawal of liquidity through this increase in the CRR would be of the order of rupees 87,000 crore. Sustained high inflation inevitably hurts savings, investment, competitiveness, and output growth. It has pronounced adverse effects on the poorer segments of the population by eroding their purchasing power. I would therefore like to emphasize, I repeat, I would therefore like to emphasize that our monetary policy actions today aimed at lowering inflation and anchoring inflation expectations will strengthen and consolidate the medium term growth prospects of the economy. The policy decisions of today are aimed at containing inflation spike, are aimed at re-anchoring the inflation expectations. At the same time, the policy will eventually result in strengthening and consolidating the medium term growth prospects for the economy. Because a high inflation, as is known very well to everyone, is detrimental to economic growth. So therefore, our decision should be seen as growth positive. We remain mindful of the possible near-term impact of higher interest rates on output. Our actions will therefore be calibrated. I would like to further stress that monetary policy still remains accommodative and our approach will be to focus on a careful and calibrated withdrawal of pandemic related extraordinary accommodation, keeping in mind the inflation growth dynamics. It is reiterated that the RBI will ensure adequate liquidity in the system to meet the productive requirements of the economy in support of credit offtake and growth. I would like to now focus on the external sector briefly before turning to the uh, you know, the concluding para. India's external sector has remained resilient amidst formidable global headwinds. Provisional data suggest that India's merchandise exports remain strong in April this year and services exports reached a new high in March 2022. Potential market opportunities have opened up due to geopolitical conditions and the recent trade agreements. And a few more trade agreements are also expected to materialize in the coming months. Strong revenue guidance by major information technology companies, that is IT companies, also bodes well for the overall external sector outlook in 2022-23. The worsening of the terms of trade driven by higher commodity prices could have implications for current account deficit in the current year, but it is expected to be comfortably financed. Net foreign direct investment flows have remained robust despite some recent moderation. Long-term flows such as external commercial borrowings remain stable. India's foreign exchange reserves are sizable with net forward assets providing a strong backup. The external debt to GDP ratio also remains low at 20%. Let me now conclude. The last two years are a saga of our determined fight against the daunting challenges posed by the pandemic and now the war. We rose to these challenges to safeguard the economy and the financial system from a maelstrom of shocks. We now stand at a crucial juncture once again. We in the RBI remain steadfast in our commitment to con contain inflation and support growth. Inflation must be tamed in order to keep the Indian economy resolute on its course to sustainable and inclusive growth. The biggest contribution to overall macroeconomic and financial stability as well as sustained sustainable growth would come from our effort to maintain price stability. Let me repeat this sentence which is very important. The biggest contribution to overall macroeconomic and financial stability as well as sustainable growth would come from our effort to maintain price stability. 
as several storms hit together our actions today are important steps to steady the ship we remain watchful of the incoming data and information to constantly reassess the situation and the outlook we will be proactive and flexible in our approach despite challenges it is comforting to note that the fundamentals of our economy remain strong and we are well placed to deal with the situation emanating from the global developments in fact the imf has uh, recently pointed out that the macroeconomic management of the pandemic in india has resulted in a strong recovery and the country is in a good position to face the current external shock let me repeat what i have said earlier i am an eternal optimist my colleagues in the reserve bank and i strongly believe that our chosen path will guide us to a better and brighter tomorrow as mahatma gandhi said i have had my share of disappointments uttermost darkness but i am able to say that my faith has ultimately conquered every one of these difficulties thank you stay safe stay well namaskar